title of today's message is A Day of Prayer. A Day of Prayer. On so many levels, we need God's intervention for our country, for our state, for our families, for our friends. Our heart goes out to May tremendously, and our prayers go up for her. We need to understand the power of prayer. Sometimes we're at a point where what can we do? We're weak. We have no strength. We have nothing we can offer. That's what we might believe. But we have to understand the strength of prayer, the power of prayer, the impact of prayer to the living God in the name of Jesus. So today we're going to review truly what prayer is and understand this mighty, mighty tool, weapon, instrument that we very often seldom use and take advantage of. I'd like to begin reading for you in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. In Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, Jesus answers the great question, Lord, what is prayer? What is prayer? One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John John the Baptist, taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say this, Father, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, audacity he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. What does that mean? Jesus is comparing the world to your Heavenly Father. And if you went to someone, a friend of yours, a friend of yours at night, because you don't have anything in your cupboard, and you went to your friend, your friend might very well say, listen, I'm not going to answer the door. I'm in bed. My wife's in bed. I'm just going to have to come back another time. But because you're there and you're showing that you have a need, your friend who doesn't want to get up, who doesn't care that much about you apparently, they're not willing to, to give it to you the first time you asked, they're eventually going to cave and come to the door and give you what you need. Jesus is reminding your heavenly Father loves you dearly. And you can come to him anytime. And he will give and take care of you 
in a mighty way. Then Jesus continued to say this. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Let me pause. A challenge. Something that should make us maybe ashamed. Do we ask God? Do we ask God? Do we go to him and ask him? Or do we leave that part neglected? Seek, and you will find. How often we might have questions, but we're not willing to put forth the spiritual muscle to find the answers to something that is heavy on our heart or heavy on our mind. Seek and you will find with a promise, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Why does Jesus say this? Because in every aspect, he is saying, I am faithful. You come to me. I am faithful. I will answer. I'll open the door. And I'll give you what you're looking for. Verse 11. Again, Jesus is comparing the world to our Heavenly Father. Which of you fathers, if your own son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, like we're fallen people, and Jesus said, if you, human person, if your child comes to you, and your child is hungry and asks for something good, and you, fallen person, very often we're selfish, very often we fall to hatred, very often we fall to many other things, and we will give good, look what Jesus said, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God will give good to his children. God will not leave his children abandoned, neglected, ignorant, or hungry. He will not. So what is prayer? In a small, brief understanding, it is this. Speaking with God. Speaking with God. They don't have, it doesn't have to be poetic words. It doesn't have to be such fabulous speech. It can be something so simple. Just bear your heart to God and speak to him. Speak honestly. And what is prayer? Fellowship. That's what we are lacking. That's why we are disconnected with God because we are lacking a prayer life so our fellowship with God is lacking. It's broken very often. Very often we speak of God in third person terms. We know about God. We know all these things about God. But we ourselves have to go to God in prayer. Humble ourselves and ask Him. Humble ourselves and talk with Him. On behalf of ourselves, on behalf of our children, on behalf of our grandchildren, on behalf of our community and our country. And the part that very often we don't do, listen. Listen. Yes. Speak to God. Yes, empty your heart to God. And at the same time, sit still. The Lord God, how many times the Word of God says, be quiet and sit there. Sit there and listen. God will speak to us. 
as we speak and empty our heart and fellowship with, with him and praise him and thank him. We need to be quiet and listen to him as well. How often we might have a question, but we're not listening for an answer. How often we have a question and a burden, and he has the answer, but we're not listening to even get it. Where should I pray? Some people feel that the only time that they can pray, the only place that they can pray is at the church. That's wrong. Now, I'm speaking at, to, to the Christian nation, you know, to the Christians overall. I'm not necessarily speaking to this congregation. I'm speaking to all Christians. Many people who believe that they know God think that the only place God will listen to me is in the church. That's not right. That's not right. Let's look here at Matthew 6, 6, where again, Jesus gives us wonderful instruction about prayer. I'm going to start at verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, meaning our Heavenly Father, God, who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I'm continuing now in verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So the place to pray is in a quiet place, a private place. Yes, there's a time of Christian fellowship and Christian family fellowship where we pray together. But each one of us should have our own personal relationship with the Lord. I appreciate so much how Brother Randy loves to fish. I think that's like probably the one, one of the most quiet times that you can have. Where you just want to sit quietly and wait on those fish. You can probably hear God quite a bit when you're uh, on that boat, just listening. You can hear the, probably the mouths of the fishes coming up for uh, the flies and the insects. You're so quiet, waiting. That's like a quiet time where you can hear, where you can meditate, where you can worship, you can sit with God. So, that's where we should pray. Whether it's in our room, fishing, in your car, in your garden. Sister Marsha, God bless her. She's at home sick today, not feeling well. Remember her in prayer. Um, she has a garden that she loves and takes care of. And that might be her quiet place where she can sit before the Lord. So I have here for you a time for, there's a time for public prayer, a time for private prayer. But you know what there's also a time for? A prayer before your meal. You know, we should, before we eat, as a family, or if you're eating by yourself as an individual, bow your head and ask thanks from God for the food that you're about to eat. Give thanks for whatever it is mom or dad or grandparents made for you, or you yourself made, and acknowledge that although I may have labored over this, although I may have bought this from the store, it's God who provided that I'm able to have this food, and God is the one who's going to allow this food to give nourishment to the body that he made. So that's why we pray over the meal before we eat it, 
and be a blessing for your family when you lead them in prayer, when you stop and not everyone start eating by themselves. Everyone bow their head and give thanks to God before you take a bite of that food. How to pray. We read the Lord's Prayer where Jesus gave us an, an instruction, an example. But we don't have to follow that verbatim. It's not meant to be memorized. But you can memorize it and you can use it. But if you consider the points of the Lord's Prayer, you'll see the points that it hits. For example, the Lord's Prayer outlines that we should praise God. So in your prayer, Give praise to God. Praise. Praise is when we acknowledge what God is doing in our lives. Count your blessings. That's a, that's a form of praise. When you start counting your blessings and say, Lord, thank you for this. Lord, thank you for this. Lord, thank you for this. Very often, when we have one small thing wrong with us, we forget all the other things, all the other wonderful things that are going on. I probably shared with enough people that I recently got a cavity. I've never got, I've never had a cavity in my life. And I went to the doctor recently. This doctor's gonna make some money off of me. He's gonna get three cavities off this guy, you know. And uh, the, the other two apparently I don't feel too much, but that one I can't wait for that for that appointment at the end of the month. And sometimes it just hurts and hurts, and then I have to remind myself, you know. Everything else is working fine. I, 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 sh I should not complain. I should not be miserable. I need to remember, this is one little pain, and everything else is okay. So that's just an example to show you that sometimes we can focus on one small thing in our life that might be very small in the big picture of things. We don't give God praise for everything else that's good. Everything else. A long list. A long list of things. So praise. Worship. Worship God. You know, sometimes we could sing before the Lord. And you know, and I tease about you know having you know about a good voice, not good voice, whatever. God doesn't care about the sound of your voice. He cares about what's coming from the heart out of your mouth. And really, if you want to sing before the Lord, whatever the quality of your voice, it'll be like music. Uh, like angels before God. God wants to hear from us. He wants to hear praise. He wants to hear worship from us. You know why? Because he deserves it. He deserves his children to give him praise and worship. When we really look at the kindness and goodness and mercy and forgiveness and love of God, he deserves praise and worship. Requests. Amen. Where do you go with the burdens? Where do you go with the heavy heart? Where can you go? Who has authority to help you? Nobody but God Almighty. Amen. God Almighty. God Almighty. Put your requests before the living God. It doesn't mean he's going to answer the way that you want. But it means that you're putting it in the hands of the one that loved you the most and the one that has authority to take care of it. When G Jesus gave us this fantastic example, Jesus came for the purpose to go to the cross on our behalf, to take care of the sins of the world. And then it was agonizing. And he went to the Father and was praying. And we got a glimpse of that prayer. And what happened? He prayed that there was another way, another way. But he then finished his prayer by saying, your will be done. Your will be done. God knows best. He really does. And when God answers the prayer, when you involve God, and God gives an answer, it's the most loving answer. It's the most loving answer. But involve God. Put that burden before him, and when God answers, have confidence that's the best answer possible. Worries. And anything. It doesn't have to 
be a great burden. It doesn't have to be a great request. It can be something so small. When my dog got sick, I so thank my wife. She put her hand over him and prayed for him. And you know what? My dog is healthy and good looking, and he's 15 years old. He is something else. And, you know, but eventually, eventually, but, you know, at least he's enjoying his golden years. He really is. And even the little dog, God loves. You know why? Because God made that little dog. He made him. God made every creature on this world. God made the little birds that we think are just accents in creation. No. God made every one of them with care and design. And he knows. The Bible, word of God says this. The Bible says this. He knows when any one of them comes out of that sky. Falls from the sky. He knows. Why do we end our prayer in Jesus' name and say amen? Jesus' name. To begin with, the Word of God says in the book of Acts very clearly that there's only one name given to mankind under heaven by which we can be saved. That name is Jesus. The most powerful name that in movies very often they use as a curse word, the most powerful name we have been given to any human being is the name Jesus. 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 The name that saves. The name that heals. The name that will welcome you into heaven. Jesus. He is the one. We have been instructed by the Lord when we pray. Pray all things in his name. So it's his righteousness, under his righteousness, that we pray, that we have our prayers answered. And the word amen, the word amen means this, may it be so, may it come to pass. That's what that means, okay? So there's a meaning behind the word amen. We just don't say the word amen without any purpose. There's a purpose, and that's what it means. May it happen. May it come to pass. In closing, our prayer shows our relationship. Our prayer shows our relationship with God. If you pray very little, then it's a shocking answer. We might have a very little relationship with God. The great prophets, not that they're better or stronger than us, but their prayer life was very strong. Elijah, Daniel, and on and on. We read about their prayer life. We read about their prayer life. That's why God did so many things through them because they had this great relationship with God. I encourage all of us, including myself, to increase our prayer life. Increase our prayer life. Our time with God, so that way our relationship with God will be stronger, will be better, we can understand His voice when He's speaking to us, and that we'll be more fruitful Also, our prayer life shows our effort. Our effort in our walk with the Lord. Do we have a light effort? Or are we making a great effort? You know, prayer is a spiritual muscle. You know, you start with, you start with a, I was going to say you start with 10 pounds. You probably start with 3 pounds. <laughs> you start with a 3 pound bar or, you know, dumbbell. And then eventually you can move up to the 10 pound. Eventually. And then eventually you can move up to the 25 pound. And then on and on. Prayer is a spiritual muscle. That's why we encourage the devotional books. That way they can maybe guide you in your prayer walk. And a prayer journal where you could, uh, you know, you have a diary that you check into every day. 
So rather than writing to yourself, you can write your prayers to God. So now you're checking in, and then you have a record of what you're putting before God, and then you can look back on it a year later, six months later, maybe a couple years later, how God did this, walked you through this turmoil, walked you through this storm, and answered this prayer. And for us, hindsight is 2020. When we're in the middle of something, sometimes things look so gray. We don't know what's black and what's white, what's clear, what's not, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's right. But when we get through something and we look back, things are so clear. Also, prayer shows our dependence on God. Prayer shows our faith in God. And prayer shows that we believe that God is our Savior. And we believe it. And we believe it. Because if you're not going to God in prayer, but rather you're just talking, worrying, talking, worrying, talking, worrying, and you're not going to God in prayer, then you're showing, God, I don't believe that you can save me. I don't believe you have the answers. I don't believe. You see, our actions speak way more than what we what, what our words are. Our actions mean everything. So may God give us strength in regards to our prayer of life. And I encourage you all through this coming week to read the book of James, James chapter 5, specifically, that talks about prayer. And, and when to go to prayer, and um, what, what prayer does, the impact of prayer, and the power of prayer. I encourage you to read it this week as a small devotion. May God give us strength. And the way I'd like to close today is this. We have so many burdens, so many burdens on our um, hearts and on our church. Brother Butch, can you please close this door for this for this next five minutes or ten minutes? Just so that we can be very quiet, very focused here. Thank you, sir. I'd like to invite our church family to take time, to take turns. And when it comes to your turn, if you'd like to share, stand up. We're going to take time to pray. Just to pray. Whatever God has on your heart, or whatever you have on your heart that you want God to help you with or help us with, we believe in God. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe God has all authority. We believe in the name of Jesus that saves. We believe. So we're going to right now just open up our time here for anyone who'd like to you know, speak whatever's on your heart and just put that before God. We're going to agree together in prayer. I'll close after everyone has had their opportunity if they want.